And when when God gets done with his little temper tantrum, the fucking Antichrist looks to the sky and says, and I quote, bring it on. Oh. Because that's as good as these writers can do. This set up the possibility <laughs> that this movie was going to end with a cheer off, and I was cheering <laughs> in. in. Yes. Jesus just dropping it like he's hot. <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because you're already used to this intro and it would be weird if I changed it now. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So you know who would make an amazing femme fatale super spy? I have no idea. Sarah Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> okay. All right. I can see it. She would crush it. Oh, this honey needs to be the shit out of some foreign a leaders. trilogy. Honey, honey dumpster, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast, that was my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. I, saw, I got to watch the... Uh, Oh, what was that word I was looking for of movies? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? Okay. Well, that word they were looking for was prequel sequel. <laughs> we watched Megiddo, the Omega Code 2. It's both the prequel and the sequel to the Omega Code. <laughs> that forgot what happened in part one. Yep, yep, sure did. Yep, And to be fair, so did I. But uh, either way, <laughs> it's part zero and part two of like a like an empty sandwich trilogy, <laughs> but just two <laughs> movies to make three, which I'm pretty sure is a cinematic technique they invented by accident just for this. So that's cool. I, I think so. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the backstory of the Antichrist. And then they catch up with their first movie. And then they go past it without acknowledging the original plot. And they're just like, fuck. Ah, we wrote over the other one. We're, we're going to get in trouble. And the movie. <laughs> and, yes. then, and it just ends out of fucking nowhere. It's the only movie I've ever seen that lacks object permanence as a movie. <laughs> yeah, no, impressive. Something. The fucking finale of this movie has like squall marks and shit leading up <laughs> to it. Yeah. So, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you watch the Omega Code, you wasted your fucking time. This is a vanity <laughs> documentary about the Antichrist, which gets interrupted by a nine-year-old playing G.I. Joe's 33 seconds before the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but did this movie go past the first one? Did they end in the same spot or <laughs> no. I didn't God reached out at the end of both of them so did he do it <laughs> twice and they just missed it in this first I don't God's just like come on nobody saw that all right one more time <laughs> fuck <laughs> I saved the world assholes maybe it's not Omega Code 2 in terms of a sequel maybe it's Omega Code Take 2 Oh, okay. Like they're trying right. the whole movie over. Oh, right. So it's like a Christian thing. It's like where God creates humanity twice at the beginning of the Bible. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. All right. Oh, a lot of arguments about canon. It's a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. I'm going to go with best worst evil commando uniforms. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're fucking absurd. The Antichrist. It's the Antichrist. He has a giant army of like, you know, evil socialist commandos from the EU. And they're all wearing <laughs> the best uniform. It's like it's like a jaunty green blazer and <laughs> equestrian boots and bright red pleated dockers. Yep. Mm. It's crazy. They look like jockeys in a musical. <laughs> it's so good. It's like Antichrist superstar. And and the whole cast is elves from Santa's workshop. The, the visual is amazing. Looking at the costume, you can see it forming in a bigot's mind. They were like, let's just put them in red and red. And then they were like, okay, well now they just are wearing red jumpsuits. Okay, fair, fair. Green. Let's put a green jacket on there. Still silly. Okay. Knee high <laughs> boots. Got it. <laughs> 
Can we make the jacket a little more like the masters, like the golfers yeah, wear? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And Perfect. let's give everyone a beret. Good, good. Yeah. Now they All look right. like a military. And Jesus. segregated country clubs. Are no, 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 <laughs> this is un unrelated. All right, so I was going to go with best worst marriage proposal. Yes. Right? Like Stone Alexander might as well walk over and lick this woman while she's <laughs> flirting with his brother. So. <laughs> He gets down on one knee, starts peeing in a circle. Around <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. And see, we've hinted at this already, but I was definitely going to go with best worst ending. The only explanation for the ending of this movie is that someone had to finish it before their mom came home. That's how quickly <laughs> and abruptly and strangely <laughs> crazy this movie ends. <laughs> I have pulled up my shorts more slowly when caught masturbating when this movie ends. <laughs> Mom! End of movie. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. There's no need to rev your tires if you're just going to spin your wheels. So we're going to take a break and just take a fucking break. But we'll be back in a minute with all the we don't know where the colon goes in a sequel action of Megiddo Omega Code 2. Hi, I'm No Illusions. And I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. And today, we've got a special message for our listeners in the UK, Australia, and Canada. As our US listeners already know, Manscaped is on a mission to change the grooming game with their below-the-waist grooming and hygiene products. But today, we're pleased to announce they just released their products in the UK, Canada, and Australia. And boy, do you guys need them. Look, there's not much we Americans can lecture those countries about, but ball maintenance is definitely one of them. Especially you, Australia. We're looking exactly. at you. Exactly. So if the shrubbery around your Big Ben is in need of a trim, the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer offers a replaceable ceramic blade with advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce grooming accidents. Or maybe you try the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, an anti chafing ball deodorant designed to make your down under a little less inhospitable. They even have a foot duster, foot deodorant, something, something, Hockey Canada. Right. Yes. So whether you're here in the good old US of A or one of those other places, get 20% off and free shipping with the code AWFUL at manscaped.com. Upgrade that dog salon with the luxury products of Manscaped. Especially you, Australia. Especially you, Australia. Exactly. Don't look away. Come on. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to the first ever writer's room meeting for the Omega Code 2 Megiddo, however the hell that's pronounced. Is it Megiddo? I, I thought it was a Mandingo. No, no, it's Megiddo or something like that. Oh, fuck. A lot of my ideas are not going to work then. Right. Right. So yeah. as you know, we don't have the entire cast back for this one. They have other projects. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we have Casper Van Dien? No, no, he's making Shark Attack. Sure, yeah, okay, can't say no to that. Uh huh. Mm. What about Michael Ironside? Uh, he died in the last movie, right? So. Right, he did. He did. Okay. Uh, what about the Fire Breathing Jews? Uh, another TV movie and an episode of Jag. Rough. Okay. Okay. Uh, Michael York. Oh Michael yeah, York? absolutely. We uh, can't help. But have him actually. He's sort of just been hanging out. Okay. Since the. Great. So one. we're just going to make the whole sequel to our first movie just about Michael York. It would appear so, yes. Did someone call for me? Are we ready to make some cinema magic? Hmm? Uh, no, uh, not yet, Michael. I, I will call you, though, when we, when we need you by name. Oh, okay. We are out of peanut butter. Oh, well, cool. Then put it on the list. The one on the fridge? Yes, the one on the fridge. I like chunky. Then put chunky peanut butter on the list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we open a course on a Bible quote, Revelation 17, 8 to be exact, which is about the beast of the apocalypse. So basically, the, the fucking movie opens on a sandwich board that says the end is nigh. <laughs> yeah. Based on a true story eventually called the book of revelation <laughs> <laughs> i love so this quote is all about the beast rising from the bottomless pit and i love the idea that the only reason this hasn't happened yet is because god didn't think this through and realized that 
like ascending out of a bottomless pit would take infinite amounts of time. Right? Oh, damn it. He's just been climbing <laughs> this whole fucking time. You can start in the middle. Tyler, go go meet him halfway. Go um, meet him halfway. <laughs> the middle of infinity is still Okay. That's still pretty far. Sarah, I need you to take one for the team. <laughs> Get down there, big girl. All right, so yeah, they throw up this quote. It's this fun little game that Christians play with the Bible where it's like, is this senseless bullshit or profound? <laughs> right, because it ends with like the beast that was and is not yet is. And I'm like, nope, it's it would be one of the, that's just dumb. Yep. That's dumb. That's how that game always ends with the Bible. It, it, no. <laughs> yeah. And the Antichrist is like giving a little talk here. Yeah, mm -hmm. Satan is doing a, a little monologue. A walk and talk monologue, but then it kind of zooms out and we see his Satan's little helper guy, his number two. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, hey, are you, are you listening to my speech? And he's <laughs> like, oh, I th thought you were doing a VO. Okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry, yeah. I didn't, didn't realize that was a diegetic. It, uh, just just quick thing, boss. Uh, I'm not sure your whole plan is going to work. You should really read ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so but instead of ahead, we're going to go back for a long fucking time. We're going to go back into the Antichrist's childhood. <laughs> so we cut to the Alexander residence in 1960, which is a big party full of important people, I guess, that we're at. Okay, the first shot we get of this is the mom's portrait with the little black sash on it. So I just wrote my note. What an incredibly inappropriate set of music for a funeral. Because it's like big band jazz. <laughs> yeah, God, was this supposed to be a funeral? I missed yeah, no, that. No, it's a Labor Day party. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I want Benny Goodman at my funeral. <laughs> yeah, so we cut to this kid and we see that his dad's a media mogul. And then we he, he goes to like um, his little brother's room to miss his dead mom. Right. <laughs> yeah. And and roast the baby. He's like, hey, hey, baby. Psst. Psst. Fuck your face. <laughs> Fuck <your baby>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does not like his little brother. And his dad, by the way, does not like this all all this grieving for mom bullshit that he's been doing either. <laughs> yeah. Dad's like, all right, man, it's been fucking 90 days since your mom died. Stop grieving like a baby. Right. We're Protestants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's ordered to stop missing his mom by tomorrow or he's grounded. And then everybody leaves. He's left with the baby and he goes and he gets this match and he's like, I hate you, baby. You killed my mom. And I'm writing in my notes. I'm like, is he going to set the baby up? This movie doesn't have the guts to set a baby on fire, does it? <laughs> In your face, Noah. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, not really. Like, he, Almost. Yeah, right. He lights the, the match and throws it in the crib, but then the nurse lady walks in and, and grabs the baby. And she, she's like, hey, man, what did we say about lighting your baby brother on fire? <laughs> like, <laughs> Stone, are you <laughs> a fire demon? <laughs> Answer in words. <laughs> so then Stone's dad sends him to like, you know, hard ass military school to straighten out his baby burning ways, I guess. <laughs> right. We see him with a fucking most interesting Dos Equis guy. <laughs> Basically, the dad's going like, hey, make sure you whip my kid's ass a little more than average ass whipping. If it just because he's, he's a baby burner. So how how shy would you say you are about torture? Because <laughs> Stone needs some structure. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> he also might be a fire demon. What? Nothing, nothing. I said all the things that I'm legally required to tell you about it. Bye. Okay. Just uh, don't have so many fireplaces. Uh, just no reason. I don't know. I just feel just like general maybe advice. Maybe he inhaled one at our house and he's a fire demon now. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then we see him saying goodbye to the son. And he's like, all right, son, I know I told him to hit you extra, but make lots of friends, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to stand there staring at dad? Okay, let's go. Let's go. I'm just going to leave him. <laughs> and then they, for some reason, they, they felt like they needed to introduce the love interest now when he's like 11. So he looks over and he sees this like nine-year-old girl and he's like, yeah, I'd hit that. <laughs> <laughs> he gets real excited. He's like, does that little girl own a fucking pony? Right, yeah. <laughs> What's uh -huh. happening here? Are we leaning in? Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, the best part, though, is the little girl, because she's a child, just stands there. But they do a slow motion shot and the pony accidentally does a hair toss. Yeah. <laughs> but they kept the shot. <laughs> so it's it's 
One would argue the mise-en-scene is that he wants to fuck that <laughs> pony. <laughs> One would argue correctly. So Yeah. So that was a meet cute between eight-year-olds we just yeah, saw. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The They'll end up married before it's over. So yeah, and then we have that weird scene where he goes to class and all the kids are making fun of him for being a baby immolator. Okay. Okay, so yeah, they put like a burned baby doll yeah, on yeah, his uh -huh. bed at his dorm as part of this. So are we to believe that this is like the first day of school? So his dad showed up, got the, the headmaster to, to definitely torture him to get structure and also spread the rumor about him trying right, to burn right. his baby brother to death in a crib. It was him or the nurse. Those are the only other people that knew about it. <laughs> Maybe his dad put that doll there. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So, okay, so he mopes off into creepy church, right? This is such a weird scene because he he walks into this creepy-ass church and, you know, a bunch of Christians kind of admitting how creepy their shit is, but there's all these weird evil noises. The kid reacts to them. <laughs> But then he keeps going into the creepy church. <laughs> he does. He's like, oh, weird. Is that like a bat gasm of some sort? Okay. <laughs> oh, no, it, it's it's non-diegetic. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes into the creepy church and uh, Emperor Palpatine shows up <laughs> in a mirror, which was interesting. And he's just like, oh, hey, uh, okay, am I a Sith? What's happening right now? <laughs> I got you this... Uh Antichrist knife, no big deal. Did uh, oh, did you get an, me anything? An antichrist <laughs> knife. I did get you something. Yup. <laughs> so it's it's a you have to order it. Bat sperm <laughs> back ordered bat <laughs> orgasm. Yeah. So the evil monk apparition guy, he's like, oh, you are the Antichrist. I know an Antichrist when I see him. Bless me, oh master, and I'll like do this evil, bloody, inverted cross, drippy thing for you. <laughs> Can I be your like? Assistant to the regional antichrist. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. Okay, you're dripping uh, some blood there. Yeah, All right. Okay, it's in my eye. It's in my eye now. <laughs> Are you going for forehead from the knife? Is that a rip? Just maybe practice a little. It's right in my eye. But I mean, to be fair, that is the best case scenario for a little boy going alone to a church at night. Uh, that could have gone way worse. <laughs> um, hello? Ah, you have arrived at last. Yes, let us make the preparations. Indeed, indeed. Uh, the ceremonial wine. Of course. Uh, the red cushions. Uh -huh. Uh The whips and chains. Yes. And uh, the black dildo. Sorry, what? The, the big black dildo. Um, I I'm the Antichrist... I was looking for Father Amici so I can ascend to my power with the upside oh, down. Oh, uh, Father Amici. Uh, his, his church is, is actually across the square. Oh, across the square. Oh, my, yeah. my bad. Sorry. Uh, no, no problem. Okay, then what? what no reason. You... Okay. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> So now we cut to the kid at the school's armory, I guess. <laughs> Phalanx 101 class. Yeah, standard. exactly. Exactly. The teacher guy is giving everyone a lecture. He's like, if, if at first everyone used to stand in lines and just, you know, run at each other. Mm -hmm. Not a great strategy, turns out. So okay. doesn't work right now. that out from my notes. <laughs> Not this. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be a great general 500 years ago. I can't wait <laughs> to graduate. And of course, during this monologue, we cut to like 10 years later and now Stone's all grown up and he's the one telling all the other kids about how to do military tactics. He's the one giving this introductory speech to the new cadets, right? Yeah. yeah. That's a dark speech. It was a little too real. He was just like, okay, everybody, you're all going to tell poor people to kill even poorer yep. people with guns and that's going to be great <laughs> for you. So... That's how war works. And also we see that he can kick some ass with some karate. Uh, this will never matter. Right? <laughs> right. Like, oh, sorry. One last thing for Phalanx 101. Uh, there might be a timeout on the gunfights in wars. 
You might have to settle it with karate. You never one know one. when you're going to be attacked by ninjas. A lot of people call timeouts like that. And, then so, and we have to reintroduce the girl with the pony from before. <laughs> and we know it's the same girl because we introduce her on a horse. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I wrote in my notes, hey, she might have grown up, but that pony grew into a fucking horse. Which is really <laughs> impressive. <laughs> So we get this scene where we we reestablish that he has the hots for her and he's so he's playing violin at some concert or whatever and he is I fucking her so noticeably that both her dad and her boyfriend catch it, right? Oh, he's staring at her like he's trying to see a magic eye. <laughs> it, it's over the top. They zoom in on him doing the violin fingerings. There's like a little clit on the bridge there. <laughs> Yeah, so then there's this, okay, so after that, there's this amazing moment where they have him, like, show up at this diner to invite her to go have a fling, but the writers of this movie don't know how any of that would work, so he just pulls up at this <laughs> diner, and she's at this table, and they keep staring at each other, like, each of them thinks the other one has the first line, and then she just gets on his moped, and they fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, because he literally drove his scooter into the diner. Like, onto <laughs> well, that's the true, yeah. The, the sales floor. Of the Hello. Diner. Just uh, drove my Vespa here. <laughs> I'm the Antichrist. And then. And I love you. Yeah. <laughs> we also see the boyfriend chasing her as she rides away. He goes, Gabriella, you forgot your cappuccino. Right. Which is just a peas and carrots, peas and carrots thing. But they kept the <laughs> audio in. So I just wrote in my notes, the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> just the, the boyfriend sadly standing there. Oh, I'll, okay. I'll I already take this home. Paid for for this. If you want I got it. one soy, one regular. Okay. okay. You, sh you should drink this before four or your tummy will hurt. Okay. It's a half cap. It's, and okay, <laughs> and then we get this little montage of like, clearly like just two characters falling in love, but it's the Antichrist, right? So there's ominous music playing <laughs> over it. All I wanted them to do like, Usual love music, but just in a minor key, right? I think I'll go for a walk outside. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the, so we get, we cut to this, like the, the big graduation from military academy, which is, of course, a paintball gun game, right? <laughs> They're going to play paintball. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to learn to kill by playing paintball. <laughs> Capture the flag, you know, but yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I love the like headmaster speech here. He's like, there are two types of soldiers, alive ones at the end of the war, and then the dead ones that didn't live through the war. I'm like, well, okay, I mean, <laughs> yes, that's, that's not really useful. <laughs> uh, there's unborn soldiers too, if you want to be technical. It's <laughs> a weird distinction you made. Also, are the teams everyone versus Alexander? Because that's what it appears. Well, it, they they have two teams, but apparently, yeah, yeah, his his thing was just to go and take on the other team single handedly. That was his plan. Also, I want to point out that this movie started in 1960. We cut to ten years later for this. The first game of paintball was played in 1981. Come on, guys, at least try. <laughs> Way ahead of their time. <laughs> Everybody's just got like an old timey palette. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> paint. So yeah, so he paintballs like a motherfucker, and then also occasionally just punches other people because fuck those <laughs> people. <does>. Yes. <laughs> I wanted, the because there's like a music montage while this is happening, the like ominous saint music. I wanted everything to come to a halt where I was like, ow, Alex, you fucking <laughs> dick. <laughs> Why would you think punching is okay? <laughs> Two. I, want, I wanted Alex to get hurt because they're all wearing <laughs> Helmets with full face shields. <laughs> so he punches the guy and I was like, okay, now it stops. And you're like, owie, owie, ow. Ooh. Oh, I, just, I should have just shot you with a paintball gun. This is so stupid. Ow. <laughs> it's the hockey locker room we wear. Keep the gloves on for the helmet <laughs> fights. Stupid. Yeah. So, but he wins the game single handedly against, by the way, Gabriella's boyfriend guy, right? Mm -hmm. Who then makes fun of him. So he inflicts him with magical satanic paint vomiting. <laughs> you guys tell me, is that sentence correct? Or did I just yeah, describe is, what that happened? That is or? correct. <laughs> the boyfriend guy's like, I have sex with pony girl who you have a crush on since you're eight and wanted to fuck mostly the pony, but also her. And he's like, oh yeah, well, uh, your blood is paint now. And, and, <laughs> and you're vomiting it up. I'm a demon. <laughs> what? <laughs> So now we cut to him and, and Gabriella out on a date. 
torn the Colosseum. There's this great moment where she's like, yes, this is the Colosseum where they used to kill all the Christians with lions. He's like, yep, mm, I remember that. Oh, I used to get off one. I used to watch movies where they talked about that. Probably so, people would get off on that. Not Saved it. A reincarnation of Satan at all. You're a reincarnation the Antichrist. <laughs> of Satan. Uh, so, I'm more like we also have this amazing moment where Satan wants to know if she likes him, likes him. He's like, are we just here to fuck? Or, you know, what's what's going on? And she's like, well, you know, I'm Italian. <laughs> uh, I like labels. <laughs> All right. So now the military academy leader guy, the Dos Equis guy is getting on to Stone Alexander for magically inflicting Gabriella's boyfriend with satanic paint vomit. Right. Yeah. That'll lose you some points from Gryffindor. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That guy's name is Fausto, by the way. Yes. Yes. Gabriel is <laughs> super, super subtle. Fausto. Can't wait to meet Jeff Estafides <laughs> in the next scene. <laughs> and yeah, and Stone standing there going, like, I, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Could have been anybody that inflicted that dude with satanic paint vomit. I just, I don't know why you would immediately look to the white guy. I don't, I get it. Feels like you were involved. You do weird, evil magic, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like a lot. You've been here for like 10 years. You do it all the time. And now he's going to threaten the guy, except because of where it goes in the conversation, it feels like he's like, um, Shadow Dog, do you mind joining us for this meeting? I, I would just feel a lot safer <laughs> yes. if Shadow okay, Dog was so. here as an impartial third party. <laughs> yeah, right. This is where, where Stone is like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to fuck your daughter also, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the guy's like, I don't know, because, you know, like like I just said before, you do weird evil magic all the time. <laughs> I don't know if you're the best for my daughter. And Stone's like, OK, well, if you let me fuck your daughter, I will not turn your blood to paint. <laughs> and he's like, OK, see, that's what I'm talking about. You say stuff like that that's, all the that's time. That's not good. My blood to good paint. One. And no. <laughs> and Stone's like, oh, really? Smoke horse. Yes, devil <laughs> yeah. muppet. Yeah, this thing looks so goddamn... Okay, so we've seen these a couple of times like lurking in the shadows, right? These evil dark things that follow Stone Alexander around, which I have been calling devil muppets up to that point. This is the mm -hmm. first time we get a clear view of them and they look like something that Spyro the dragon would kill. It's supposed oh. to be creepy, but it just <laughs> looks so silly. I really <laughs> wanted this scene to just go like four minutes longer because he's like, do we have an agreement cut but I just wanted the guy to be like yes what the fuck is that it's a shadow <laughs> you know shadow I, dog. call it a devil muppet I never really thought about what it hit it's the spirit of sadness I guess <laughs> do you mind if I take him for a quick walk so we could make Sorry, his poop Steve, can you come in time smoke horse <laughs> he's, he's distracting us from I'm trying to fuck this guy's daughter and not turn him to paint or maybe turn him to paint I don't know <laughs> all right so now it's it's graduation time so he's graduating. His little brother's there, uh, the one that he tried to burn to death. And we learn that Stone Alexander is going to go to work for the European Union, which doesn't. Nope. Yeah, right. Well, that's the thing. It was <laughs> no, like not. I was a I was old enough to buy cigarettes when it was the name was changed to the fucking European Union. The people who wrote this movie were around then. I remember it. <laughs> Jesus fucking anyway yeah so it was the European community at that time was the, was the name for the fucking thing but anyway yeah he's going to work for the European did they not get the rights to that like what happened there? <laughs> so yeah so we meet the dad and the little brother and we have to ex kind of explain away the fact that later on all of these actors will have different accents right <laughs> it's insane yeah okay where are they from they're, they're it's an American family right yeah. we're on we're, we see him on Labor Day in 1960 being all American with American military people. But dad has like a moving accent around the European community. <laughs> yes. And but the son has a British accent. And and later an Italian one. Yes. Yeah. 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 Who the fuck even knows? But yeah, they try to explain <laughs> that. Accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they they try to explain that a little bit at this point by by uh, him going literally. This is the line. Uh, Stone Alexander goes, "But father, I was raised here in Europe. Europe is my home, <laughs> <laughs> the country of Europe." You see, you know, just generally <laughs> around. Yeah, <laughs> and also, so this is where uh, little brother meets 
Gabriella, right? His little brother David meets with Gabriella and he and he's like, Oh, I smell love triangle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He walks up to her, he's like, Hi, uh, I'm David. You, you know my brother by any chance? Um He's the Antichrist. No, no, big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Probably recognize really him. And I, at this point, I'm like, okay, if this turns into the backstory of the Antichrist's little brother, I'm on board. That's awesome. <laughs> well, guess what, he yeah. You Kinda are does. fucking on board. You lucky yeah, bastard. I get stuck on board here. Be careful what you wish for. So, yeah, so little brother and horse girl are all falling in love. They're just flirting away. And just then, Stone shows up and gives the, my best worst, the, uh, you know, where he pisses on her leg and says, mine, mine. It's, yeah. how he literally is like, oh, I see you've met my brother. Hey, why don't we get married, huh? huh? <laughs> <laughs> to which she responds, uh, I got to go. And he's like, cool, cool. She loves it, right? Lots of people who want to marry you say not yes, right? They say <laughs> something other than yes when they want to marry mean, her you. her soup was getting cold. I feel like she's going to come back <laughs> after that and tell me yes, <laughs> right? Yeah, but she, yeah, she was not. It's a hot soup. It's a hot soup. You don't want that. It's a bisque. She doesn't seem Congeals. super cool about the attempted betrothal. But hey, you know what? It, it ends up working out because then we cut to 25 years later where he's given a speech at his old military academy, apparently picking up on a 25 year old conversation. Yes. And <laughs> speaking of luck, 25 years ago, call back. Were you guys, were you guys there? <laughs> no, none of you. Oh, you weren't alive. Oh, oh. wow. Okay. Weird. <laughs> All right. This is like an Eli call back then. <laughs> so, and oh, and this is where we learn that Michael Bain is in this movie, the guy who killed the goddamn Terminator. Well, yeah. Sarah Connor killed the Terminator, but you know, like oh made yeah, the and he was Hicks mm -hmm. from Alien. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Terminator, Alien, Omega Code Two. Um, yep. All the greats. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Stone is giving his little speech. He's like, I'd like to point out that my father is here. I haven't killed him yet. I kill him later. It says so in the first movie. Uh, yeah, I haven't uh -huh. done that yet. It's been 25 years since we last saw each other, but my dad is the same age forever and ever. <laughs> so that's cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, so they all like step stand around and say, wow, weird that we would all have different accents if we were related <laughs> Each other. And the same clothes from 25 years ago he has. That's so weird. That's so weird. And then dad's like, uh, son, will you join me in the corner for a whisper fight? It's about whether or not you're Satan. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Dad wants to <laughs> walk off and chat with him in the ninja battle room of the mansion. <laughs> and, 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 and he's like, he's like, son, I'm very sorry for raising you to be the Antichrist. Sure did fuck that up. <laughs> And this is where, like, they have the gladiator, like, you will not be the emperor moment. Oh, it's amazing. He's going to, this is this is the exact quote, <laughs> he's going to donate his television empire, including all the satellites, to the people. What? No? <laughs> You're giving away the media to the people <laughs> of the world? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, it seems like a weird gift and would be oddly received. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I, Richmond Vaughn, changed my mind. I'm giving all my TV companies and satellites to you, the people. Uh, how? What? Uh, I, well, I'm going to give, the, like, they will be yours. Like, you're going to... You're going to give television to all of us? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, I mean, that's a nice gesture, uh, but like, how are we going to run it? Who's who's in charge? The people will be in charge. Right, right. Yes, yeah, the, the people. Yeah, you got that. All right, well, you're welcome. You, you want to use the, the satellite to try to see some boobs? Fuck yeah, I want to use the satellite to try to see boobs. Nice. Socialist. I mean, fair. I mean, that's what we you would, use the satellite would for, right? look for boobs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, but Stone is like, no, no, you can't give away my inheritance. I, I'm gonna need that shit. <laughs> and he has this fucking insane moment where he's like, I require much more comforts 
than you can imagine, Papa. <laughs> and I just wrote okay. my notes. I'm talking two pillows, two. <laughs> And not those flat motherfuckers either, the fancy <laughs> ones you get on Amazon that you think won't make a difference, but really do. <laughs> <laughs> Talk like a European walk-in, you know? <laughs> you know you Weird. It's off-putting. Need my comforts, father. <laughs> <laughs> There's also one other crazy little moment. They cut away from this part, and we see little brother who almost got murdered in the crib, and he's dancing with Gabriella, Stone's wife now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, so uh, should we dance now? And she, the actress, is like, I, I guess, but maybe we wait for the music to come on? Nope. No? Right now. Okay. okay. All right. And we watched them dance for a minute with no music in the entire movie. It was insane. <laughs> what did they do? Well, it's so because, they, yeah, they're, they're flashing back and forth. Somehow, little brother and wife are still expositing, despite the 24 minutes of flashback that led up to this and the fact that this is a sequel. You know, she's like, <laughs> you sure are a congressman with a big, like a, <laughs> a, 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 a upward trajectory in your future. <laughs> and then so yeah and then we cut back to stone and his dad going like uh yeah you know this is this is not gonna work for me i'm gonna have to uh do something about it and, and there's like this very long moment where dad keeps not realizing that he means murder him right? <laughs> <laughs> i know i know but if you want to go to court i just want you to know that there is a very strict mediation clause I'm I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> oh, you think you'll murder me in a mediation? I'll have you know I've been through several mediations, <laughs> yes. son. I think I'll come across just fine. <laughs> He's literally tossing him off the balcony, like going, "No, do you see what I mean? I'm tossing you off the God damn it, Daddy." Anyway, no, I'm gonna toss you off the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So he throws his dad off the balcony, and then he runs out, and he's like. Someone threw my dad off the balcony. Quick, come. <laughs> Everybody runs out and dad dies. Right. But for a second, maybe he's going to talk. It's, so he's got to be like, oh. don't try to speak, father. P please. <laughs> kind of my whole evil plan. If you say, even if you point. Dad starts talking. He runs the hand over the face with the <laughs> finger into the mouth. Don't speak. You jumped off the balcony. You jumped off the <laughs> balcony, guys. All right. Well, now that we know that they did actually remember that they mentioned that he killed his dad in the first movie, I have to cross out some jokes from later. So uh, we're going to take a quick <laughs> break. But when we come back, there will be even more Megiddo Omega Code 2. Lulu, Lou, just brushing my teeth. Brushing my teeth is my favorite teeth. Lulu, Lou. Hey, Heath. Hey, Noah. What are you doing here? Uh, I. I'm here to reward you for brushing your teeth. Oh, you are? I sure am. Got to keep those chompers clean and happy. Here's a dollar. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, but I already got rewarded for brushing my teeth thanks to Quip's new smart electric toothbrush. Good habits can earn you great perks like free products, gift cards, and more. Wow, really? Yep. The Quip smart brush for adults and kids connects to the Quip app with Bluetooth. You can track when and how well you brush, get tips and coaching to improve your habits, earn points for daily brushing, and bonus points for completing challenges like streaks. You can even redeem points for rewards like free products, gift cards, and discounts from Quip and their partners. That's legitimately awesome. It sure is. Plus, you can get brush heads, toothpaste, and floss refills delivered from $5 and shipping is free. How smart is that? Start getting rewards for brushing your teeth today. Just go to getquip.com slash awful right now to get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash A-W-F-U-L. Quip. Better oral health, made simple and rewarding. All right. Well, I'm I'm off to reward Eli for wiping. Great. Uh, how's that going? Not great. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. I said great. It was weird that I said great. Minions, come before me. Yes, Lord yes, Satan. Yes, Lord Satan. The time has come for me to ascend to Earth and bring about the apocalypse. Praise me to the Dark One. Yes, prepare your armies, for within 40 to 
Fifty-five years. The time will come to rise and take what is ours from the um, kingdom. T- oh, I'm sorry. Can we? Yep. Yeah. Well, question. Did, yeah. Yes. Did you say forty to fifty-five years? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Probably. You know, forty, fifty-five years, something like that. Ah. Uh, well. Okay. Uh. Why? Why the delay? Oh, I. I must enter my vessel. A child. Uh, who is poised to inherit great power, and then mm. you know, after I go to school and stuff, uh, so, I would. Sorry, uh, right, question. Angel? Um, you say school and stuff. You know yeah. how to write now. Yeah, but no. Well, I gotta go to school in a little boy's body, and I... then I, then I gotta get a job at the UN, work my way to the top. Uh, so that's gonna take some time, and then we then it's we can involved. do the evil antichrist. Okay, all there. right. Well, I mean. You know you're the boss here, but it seems like we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of downtime in there where you, Satan, pr- mm-hmm. Prince of Darkness, King of Hell, are just sort of hanging out, hanging out. Yeah, just like doing math homework apparently and schmoozing. Yeah, there's, in, there will be the a lot of schmoozing in this plan. Yeah, maybe you could just inhabit. I don't know, like uh, the current head of the UN. Oh, uh, save yourself, like. You know, 40 or 50 years. That would be great. You fools, the Antichrist must begin his reign from the very start. Now, I must leave you. Hand me my copy of How to Make Friends and Influence People. Uh, all right, here you go. Excellent. I will see you in 40 years. 40 or 50, you said. Y- y- yes, 40 or 50. Even 55. Probably 55, the way you said it now. Sure. And we're back and we're going to rejoin the film 10 years after all the dad killing with Stone taking communion in a way that very much says the Antichrist is a Catholic, not a Protestant, y'all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like literally doing the Eucharist thing, like almost exactly. Like, can you use the blood and body of Christ for being the Antichrist? <laughs> I feel like that was an oversight. <laughs> like, <laughs> And it's weird that like, this isn't more creepy than Catholic mass, right? They just substituted a few words. The, Did they? Yeah, the audience is supposed to look at this scene and be like, wow, three, maybe four words in that prayer are different than the one we do. So, yeah, real weird. Yeah, I I, it, I missed that entirely. <laughs> I thought he was just taking communion. I, I, It was so not creepier than regular. I didn't <laughs> notice that they had changed it at all. I, I thought that they were just saying like, hey, look, he's he's Catholic. <laughs> no, he says like this is my body tainted with sin. So oh, you, that's how you gosh, know it's I, like I, sa- satanic. <laughs> oh, now, now it's scary. I see. Yeah. Oh, so Satan got transfigured somehow for this? I, I guess. No, yeah, he's, he's just doing transubstantiated, like doing opposite day regular mass. I see. Yes. <laughs> You yeah. might as okay. well just do regular mass and then be like, not at the end. And now it's the Antichrist. <laughs> uh, also, just a general question. This started saying 10 years later, right? Mm-hmm. What year is it? Is it 2005 now? Yes. Yeah, that would, that's how I have it. Okay. Because we started in 1960. We went to 70 and we cut 25 years ahead, right? To 95. And now we're 10 years ahead of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's 2005. Right. And this movie, I believe, was released in 2003, right? So this is supposed to be like near future. All right. And in this universe, apparently, Lee Ermey was elected president. We have President Steers and Queers in this universe. <laughs> yeah. He's right? so good. Well, first, we have the little homage to the first Omega Code where the newscasters come in and Catch us up on all the details. <laughs> oh, I forgot this was a sequel because it spent a third of its runtime on the Antichrist backstory. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is SSN, which is not a great title for your news corporation. <laughs> and the journalist on TV is like, so Stone Alexander ended world hunger entirely. But is he secretly evil? Right. Find out after the break. Yeah. Fi- film at 11. What? Yeah, so, and then we learn that Lee Ermey is the president and Michael Bain is the vice president in this universe, right? Oh, it's so good. They're just, they're just doing what we did for the first movie. They're just standing there roasting literal clips from the first movie at this point. (laughs) Yeah, right. So, so we've caught back up with, we're like now 
contiguous with the first movie, right? Because he's given his like, oops, I just admitted that I'm a living God, didn't I, speech. Right. Except now it's intercut with shots of his younger brother being like, oh, classic older brother declaring himself the Antichrist. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got that one family member. Yeah, dude, your brother's weird. You're the <laughs> vice president, though. It should be fine. Also, we learned that the world has been changed a little bit politically. Mm -hmm. No more countries. The world's divided up into 10 democratic zones. One of those 10 is Israel. <laughs> yep. and that's it. Yes. Yeah, the, the zones are divided by your grandfather's racism. <laughs> <Apparently. laughs> they totally are. <laughs> For the first time, but not the last time, this is where we will learn that the Latins are yes. all grouped together. Yes. Yep. By which this movie means Mexico, all of South America. Yes, all of Latin America is one zone because they're divided up by skin tone. <laughs> Antichrist ite domum. Yeah, <laughs> the Latins. <laughs> so... So and, and now the pre all the president's advisors are warning him that one, now that he's got most of the world on board, the Americans who have not yet bought into this whole one world government concept are going to be his first tar targets because obviously they have the most freedom, right? Mm -hmm. They have this moment where they're like, oh, and according to this satellite data that we just got, Stone Alexander is trying to get nuclear weapons from Russia. And Lee Ermey's like, wow, I bet that'll come back up later in the movie, huh? And everybody's bring, like, no. Bring. No, it won't. Oh, it he's won't. calling right now about that. <laughs> Shit. Do, do we pick up? Do we hit ignore? I feel like he'll know from the number of rings. <laughs> yeah, we gotta wait. Gotta wait for the full rings. <laughs> So, yeah, fucking Stone calls the president on Skype and tells him he better meet him in Rome or else. I expect you to be at my party in Rome. Okay. Oh, yep. Okay, you said that. <laughs> Real weird. I am Michael York. I say everything weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we cut to Air Force One, which has apparently merged in with Air Force Two, like Voltron <laughs> style, because both the president and vice president are on this airplane together yeah fun fact the this shot of air force one from the outside is taken from the movie air force one <laughs> yes yes i wanted them to just like pan over outside of air force one and then there's like air force one from their own other movie flying next to them <laughs> yeah, like oh, are we in the same timeline oh, oh, fuck. shit <laughs> so yeah and so the vice president though has looked over the fucking data and he's noticed that Everybody who opposes the Antichrist, his brother, dies of natural causes. <laughs> but again, it's the president drill sergeant from mm -hmm. Full Metal Jacket. So he's like, yeah, I'm just thinking maybe we don't piss him off. I'm going to challenge him to a fight. And then the other guy in the plane is like, uh, actually, I think he might be right. Shut up, Rick. Play gin. Gin. I win. Yeah. That was weird. They bet $25 on their game of gin, apparently, too. <laughs> Odd. It's weird you wouldn't you would make it a two bill situation. You know? <laughs> they also shake hands at the end of their game of gin. Yes. Uh huh. He's a good good gym player. game. Good gin game. Yeah. Hold on. Can you break? Can you break a five? I'm, uh... <laughs> All right. So now we have the Antichrist addressing, you know, the people and showing off his sweet new evil army. Mm hmm. And we, we we start off on the stock crowd shot, which we know is a stock crowd shot because it's like not set up the way one would set up a crowd for a political rally? No, it is not. <laughs> Very clearly a soccer match. Yeah. <laughs> and he's announcing to everybody, he's like, uh, no more countries, only one currency, only one language. For some fucking reason, we settled on English, which is weird, <laughs> See, but... I wrote in my notes, please be Esperanto, please be Esperanto, <laughs> please be Esperanto. <laughs> and then he's like, also, I'm the dictator of the world. But in a good so, way. That's like, don't be afraid, though. Uh, no, I meant in a good. I'm like Caesar. You know? <laughs> it's going to go great. Yeah. So he's like, I'm not the devil incarnate. And everybody starts shitting. Not the devil incarnate. Not the devil, <laughs> not the devil incarnate. incarnate. And, and then, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so then the president shows up to chat with the Antichrist. Right. And he's like, look, I know a bunch of crappy commie countries want to join your union. But, you know, because shitty but fuck you right because that's how <laughs> diplomacy works and he 
he hugs the little brother and I wrote in my notes, ah, always awkward when you have to hug the Antichrist at the beginning of a political summit. <laughs> <laughs> come here, come here, guys. Let me get this guy out of here. Come on, let me rest hey, here. brother. <laughs> All right, now, yes. <laughs> join my evil European Union or I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, right, right. He's like, join the New World Order. And the president's like, no, America, America, freedom. And he's like, all right, well, I guess I'll have nothing to do but shake your hand and see you off. <laughs> Here. Hey. Have a magic handshake. I mean, what? handshake. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you're putting out your hand in slow motion? What's happening now? Okay, it just feels like your hand's going to let on fire or something as soon as I grab it. No? All right, all right, all right, we're doing a handshake. We're doing a handshake. Cool. Yeah. America handshake. Yeah, right, right. And I'm dead. Yeah, well, exactly. So, like, he goes to shake his hand, and he's like, I'm pretty sure the devil magic's in the handshake, but what am I going to do, right? So he shakes him in his hand, and sure enough, a minute later, like, 10 seconds later, he collapses from all the devil magic that was transferred in with the uh, with the handshake. The, the Antichrist didn't even bother to put in a delay. It's kind of obvious to think. <laughs> Would have been great if the president just like fist bumped him and walked away. And the Antichrist was like, <laughs> God damn it. Ah, it doesn't count. Oh, shit. Shit. Ah. <laughs> High five. Uh, High five. Let's play uh, a game called hands touch. <laughs> touch. And Raps. in what would otherwise be a very serious scene, when the president starts to have a heart attack, everyone grabs one limb and they carry him <laughs> like they're fucking helping Hillary Clinton into an SUV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so after the collapse, David, the vice president, Michael Bain, is meeting up with Gabriella, the, the wife now, I guess, of the Antichrist. And she's like, yeah. how's the president? And he's like, not great, you know, demon heart attack. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Uh, did he shake hands with my husband by any chance? I, 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 <laughs> well, just the first, how's the president is my only question, <laughs> actually. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, so they have this conversation where David's like, you know, I'm secretly in love with you. She's like, I know. Is there any other exposition that you'd like to share? I'm um, just like, sure. Does your husband uh, kill everyone who opposes him with devil magic? Because I'm about to oppose him. I just feel like it what? would be useful for me to know. Kill everyone? What, is, what are these words? No, it's what? <laughs> I have a I have a pony. I wanted I wanted to see like a super old pony in a jazz scooter come out here. <laughs> no. Tosses its hair back and forth in front of David. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong brother, never mind. So <laughs> All right, so yeah, so she he's like, "Hey, watch out just in case your husband's the antichrist." And she's like, "Yeah, we'll do." And then somebody comes to fetch him and he's like, "Hey, it's time for us to move on to the next scene where you meet with your brother." All right? So he goes to meet with Stone Alexander, who all but spins around in a chair to face him, right? He's, he's holding a teeny tiny espresso. Yes, he's got the evil European <laughs> tiny cup. He's swishing it like brandy. Ow, ow, ow. That didn't work at all. It's hot and it's not a snifter. Okay. I tried to do a thing. So, yeah, he's like, uh, you know, say, really sorry I had to fill your president fill with uh, homicidal devil magic. But just so you know, if you're not joining me, I'm going to put out this doctored video of you killing our dad. Okay. It's a pretty good deep fake. Uh, before we talk about that, what's happening with that jacket? It's really long. <laughs> it's so long. It's distracting. It's like a, it's clearly like an evil amount of length in a suit jacket. How do you get that? You don't like it? It goes to my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> I got it at the Taylor. Yeah, so. Uh, but just then, just before he can explain the jacket, the guys come in to tell him that the president is dead. Well, and they do it in the most awkward way. He goes, Mr. President. And then there's sort of like a knowing pause. And I wanted to be like, a... oh, I gave it away. Sorry. Uh, you're the president. Is the president's dead. They said a slow roll, and I didn't. I was like, I totally oh, cranked that up. Your yeah. brother's dead. And he's like, okay, well, then I will give you 24 hours to answer my question rather than kill you with my devil magic right now. Right? Yeah. And then he leaves, and there's this tiny moment that I just absolutely have to mention. He's had this evil number two Palpatine from the church saying earlier. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he, like, gets in right up close. Everyone's gone. He gets up right up close, and he's like, psst, psst. Yeah. Yeah. What? You, you want to kill him? Yeah. Okay. We yeah. should kill him. They're all gone. I got it. Thank you. Noted that you could just talk normal. 
Oh, <laughs> we should kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we get this brief moment of like the Antichrist talking shit to Jesus, <laughs> right? There's all this thunder clapping and everything. And he's looking at all these paintings of Jesus going, it was stupid when you got crucified. That was You're fucking, so fucking dumb. dumb. <laughs> your dad's a dick. <laughs> Tell your dad he's a dick. <laughs> dick. Which means you're a dick, technically. Fucking dick. Oh, and then Palpatine comes in and he's like, hey, your brother's turned down your offer. And I only mention that one because it moves the plot forward, but also because there's just a little bit too long a pause between your brother turned down your offer and the Antichrist going back into his monologue. And I really thought he was going to be like, cool. So you heard the latest TikTok gossip? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Charlie's mom wouldn't let her dance to WAP. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about that? No, you know what? I'm going to go challenge God to a meteor fight. I'll challenge God to a meteor fight. <laughs> yes. Okay, boss, you keep giving these speeches about that. Like uh, mm, you said, I can't see how I lose. To, you got to read ahead, man. It's really <laughs> Important, I'm telling you. It really, you got the it book right there, but you're lays just lays like, it out how it. you how you lose. Yeah, yeah. So Satan goes outside and he's like, "Ah, God, you're such a wuss. I bet you can't even knock down the Colosseum with a meteor, can you?" So God knocks down the Colosseum with a meteor. Yeah, because God is easier <laughs> to go than the kid in school who ate bugs. <laughs> <laughs> God's just like angrily throwing his water bottle on the sideline. Yeah, right. So, and when God, when God gets done with his little temper tantrum, the fucking Antichrist looks to the sky and says, and I quote, bring it on. Oh. Because that's as good as these writers can do. This set up the possibility <laughs> that this movie was going to end with a cheer off, and I was cheering <laughs> <him> in. Yes. <laughs> Jesus just dropping it like he's hot. <laughs> and then we, okay, so, so then we get some signature Omega Code newscaster exposition about the meteor fires and floods and plagues and riots and all the other bad shit they could think of in their brainstorming session. <laughs> so... Stone Alexander turns to the International Council of Stereotypes to ask how they're going to fix things, right? <laughs> oh, my God. This room is where I lock all the accents I'm not allowed to do post-2005. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all watching that news that's telling us, like, oh, you know, in case anyone, you know, can't see the biblical plagues happening everywhere... That is happening. <laughs> yeah. There'll be a vaccine rolling out right before the election, though. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. We'll get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> By the way, Antifa is completely blowing the apocalypse out of proportion. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. And then, so while we're watching this, we're also cutting back and forth to President David, who still refuses to join the Antichristian League. Oh, my God. He reaches a being escorted out of the Applebee's level of insanity in this argument. <laughs> well, yeah. OK, so he perfectly encapsulates American conservatism. Right. So one of his advisors says, well, OK, so why is world peace a bad thing? And President David <laughs> says, because it takes away my freedom. <laughs> I'm staying. Boy, is America. Right there. I'm finishing my coffee. <laughs> Do you know that Fucking when you America. wear a mask, you inhale as much CO2 as if you were standing? No, that's none of that is. Come on, Mr. <laughs> President. They're going to tase you. <laughs> <laughs> but then he just starts reading off like little snippets of America documents that he sort of knows yeah. but doesn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he's just like basic free for the people, we the people, of the people, four score and <laughs> seven. <laughs> Bring us your tired, mountain poor, just yeah. huddled. Man, Fuck so you. Start over <laughs> with just my children and my wife. Yeah. So he has his America will not be bullied speech. And then we cut back to the Antichrist who's like giving out gold stars for whoever murdered the most people in their zone. <laughs> yeah, Russian guy is <laughs> sucking up. He's like, I, I just want to throw this out there. I'm actually executing everyone who disagrees with us. And he's he's in the middle of giving out that gold store when the wife comes in. Yes, and he's just yes. like, oh, uh, you know what? Do it. Um, Ixnay on the Erder maze in front of my Ifeway, but... Good, good um, 
Andrew, can you come in here and explain that these are jokes? These are just jokes. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even just say like, uh, no, I don't want you killing people. Wink, wink. He like had just as much as like, okay, let's go for a medium amount of fascist murder though, right? Because like, right, honey, that's what you uh, were hoping for. I medium, would say. How do you feel about medium murder? Uh, you're still mad? <laughs> oh, you're mad. I feel like you're still mad. Yeah, you're mad. All right, so then we cut to this amazing scene where the like Antichrist wife is henpecking him for heading a worldwide fascist empire. Oh, it's the best. They're just it's a couple fight, literally a couple fight with the Antichrist, and the wife's like, "I just heard that you're doing the apocalypse. We are talking about this before bed. The apocalypse. <laughs> this would have been a doodly do if it wasn't actually part of the goddamn. Yeah, there's movie. no right. we there's no doodly do to do. They they, they did it for us. Yeah, and so he's just like, he starts teasing her. He's like, you're a philanthropist. You hang around poor people. Ew, poor people. And then he wanders off, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she she accuses him of the murder, too. She's like, I heard you murder, like, everyone with handshakes. And I believe the president just, like, died of a handshake. And he's like, I knew you'd throw that in my face. I knew you would do that. <laughs> and yes, I do sometimes kill people with handshakes. Yeah. All the time. I kill all, yeah. I kill, I'm a, I'm a demon. I love, yes. like, she's like, you know, well, the people will find out that you're not really as good a person as you pretend to be. And I'm like, wow, did the Christians overestimate themselves? <laughs> right? They thought that their fascist dictator would have to be a, like, at least pretend to be a good person to fool them. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Mm -mm. You guys didn't know that. Anyway, so now we cut to a huge crowd where none of the actors from this movie are visible. And then a very tight shot where two people's hands are waving around the line at the bottom well, of the screen. He's giving a speech to uh, Africa. <laughs> Hello, all of Africa. The continent. Yeah. Hello, Africa. Is, is there? Yep. <laughs> all of Africa. Thank you for making it. Did a, uh, did a show in the Middle East last night. Man, are my arms... Hired? Boy, <laughs> are my arms blown up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my very long coat. Boy, are my arms dealers. No? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Fantastic. Also, <laughs> what what was with the chaos line, right? Where he starts yelling chaos and he's just like, should I say that again in case the Oscars need it? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's the best. Yeah, he's given this big speech and this, this crowd kind of doesn't react when he thought he like punched a big line. <laughs> he's like... The world is in chaos. I said <laughs> chaos, 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 echo. Did you say echo? See, my theory was that was just Michael York trying to pronounce that word through his crazy person accent. Chaos. <laughs> chaos. <laughs> Chasu. And so, all right. So then we get to, we go chaos. to Mexico because apparently this movie <laughs> thinks it'll find a plot there. And this is where Gabriella is off doing some charity work. <laughs> and a Mexican general shows up and says, hi, I'm going to come back in act three. They felt like if I showed up now, it would be less confusing. So, hi. Yes, you are. It's me. You are here in <laughs> Latina, Vania, <laughs> Latin. <laughs> land, land, Latin. Stan. <laughs> Latina Stan. <laughs> there you go. Latinxistan? It's it's Latinx. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So then they so so they talk over a dying Christian old lady and pray for her. And meanwhile, the Antichrist we cut back to Africa and he's like, and by the way, African people, fuck you. Take my lightning powers right up your ass. Lightning powers. <laughs> what? Okay. This is a weird moment. Yep. The whole thing's crazy, but the Antichrist set up a speech to do an evil magic show that does appear to be the case for uh, homicidal all 500 people in Africa yes mm -hmm. yes to demonstrate his power he he yells to the crowd i can't help you because you refuse to bow to me as your god and then he hits them all with lightning and kills a bunch of them and then the other ones bow to him as a god and i'm like dude like if if your goal was to convince these people you're you're a god you open with the lightning powers, you like yeah. you come in and you're like lightning powers. Now who thinks I'm a god, right? <laughs> Feel like yeah. they're doing whatever you want at that point. Yeah, you definitely. 
you don't want to open with your international policy and close with your lightning bolts. <laughs> exactly. I've orchestrated several trade deals. Yeah. No? Okay. All right. Like, <laughs> I guess we're going to have to use lightning powers again. <laughs> so, I want you guys to know that Sweden bowed to me just for the trade deal. So, yeah. <laughs> That's why they get their own zone in my weird 10 zone earth. So, okay. All right. You're, you're, you're God or whatever. Do you want us to all sing... Stereotype noises from our different <laughs> ethnic groups right yes, now? Yes, I would, would really great. like yeah, if you, you would all sing stereotypes. Sing the songs of Africa. I miss the rain. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, not Toto, not Toto. God damn what? it. All right, well, I'm pretty sure berating a bunch of people and shooting them with lightning is going full antichrist, so I think we can take another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will this movie remember that it's a sequel to a flick about the Bible code? Can these writers overcome the fact that the Christian apocalypse is preordained and that no character within the film can have any significant effect on it? Does Stone Alexander have any other Mortal Kombat fatality powers to unleash? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the profligate conclusion of Megiddo Omega Code 2. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the World United Summit of all the nations. Of the world. I am Stone Alexander, and I am your god. Well, he says that a lot. Shh. Sorry. Today, I would like to unveil to you a new plan for a united world. No longer will borders hold us back. You will be divided into ten zones. First, the Americas. Wait, we're, we're stuck with... The United States? Yes, I am sorry, Canada. Tough luck. Oh, man. Then there are the Latins. You know, just all of them down there. I, I'm i sorry, sir. Are, are you combining like, like Mexico and all of South and Central America as one yes, zone? Yes, yes, yes. You know, La Cucaracha or whatever. You guys will be great. Then there are the Asians. I know you guys don't get along, but I can't tell you apart, so figure it out. Woof. Africa. You get to stay one big country. What? Russia. Uh, weirdly enough, you get your own thing. Not sure why I did that. Australia, New Zealand, Europe, the Middle East. Wait, hold on. You group the entire Middle East together. Yes, all the brown people except for Africa. What? Sorry, sorry, sir. N none of the countries are going to accept this. There's thousands of years of history here that you're not taking into account. What if I offer all members of my evil army a beret? Oh, well, I'm fucking in it. For nice. Me, okay, yeah, That's beret. Uh, totally in. Yes, berets for all. <laughs> <laughs> Big wireless, please hold. No, wait, no, don't put me on hold again. I want to talk to... We got a quirky Listen. pretty girl to sing our hold music to help you to forget we're a giant megacorp. Aren't we relatable? Hold music. Our CEO makes $12 million a year. No, no, this is not. Big wireless. I, I what can I charge uh, you? Sorry. Did you say what can I charge you? Yeah, we're kind of dropping the pretense these days. I mean, what are you going to do? Switch to Mint Mobile? Oh, what's Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile provides the same premium network coverage you're used to, but at a fraction of the cost because everything is online. Mint Mobile saves on retail locations and overhead, then passes those savings directly to you. Okay, look, I just want to pay for the phone calls I make and the data I need. Not all these weird hidden fees and stuff. Well, Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Ditch your old wireless bill and start saving with Mint Mobile. Wow, that's so much less than what I'm paying you. It is, that's true. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get that plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Okay, that that sounds great. Can I cancel with you then? Uh, or? sure. Yeah, please hold. No, no, not Quirky again. Quirky humanizing hold music. <sighs> Quirky funny humanizing hold. First. We paid this girl less than two hundred dollars. Our CEO has a toilet made of gold. 
toilet made of gold. Okay, I got into it. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action at Stone's Castle where he's making fun of Gabriella's dead poor people and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. He's like, come on. Old ladies die all the time. Old ladies actually have comorbidity. So like, <laughs> 94% of apocalypse death technically isn't on me. Right. Think about it. And then some, okay, so then some newscasters cut in to explain what's going on, right? This is where we see, like, the Sphinx breaking apart and all the massive earthquakes and tornadoes and gas shortages, et cetera. Yeah, and the reporter says 25 states are seeking apocalypse aid. So apparently the other 25 are just, like, letting a free market figure it out? Yeah, well, <laughs> I think I know which 25 those would be. I'm living in one of them, that's for sure. How's that market going? How's that invisible hand that's not stabbing you in the arm with the fucking <laughs> vaccine? Yeah, I wrote in my notes, what I love is that God and Satan have identical tactics, so really they're just having a smite off, if you think about it. Really, yeah, actually. Mm -hmm. So then there's this moment, basically, where we have President David and all his advisors are saying, hey, man, you need to be, you know, you need to get on board with your brother, the Antichrist. And then we cut to the Antichrist and all his advisors are saying, hey, man, you need to be tougher on your brother, the president. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is where the uh, secretary of state shows the video of him killing his brother. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, this is where he's had <laughs> enough of, of uh, <laughs> David's like resistance to the one world government. And look, I get it. Pre-Trump, I can see why people would think this kind of thing could take down a president. But <laughs> nowadays, you know, <laughs> Fox News would have Tucker Carlson telling him old people are magnetically attracted to balcony railings and all the Republicans would be throwing themselves <laughs> off high shit to pwn the libs. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, so he shows that on TV and then the FBI shows up at the White House with a warrant to arrest the president because that's how that would work. Right. Oh, if only. Yeah. yeah. If only. <laughs> the FBI sent five guys. Yes. To deal with the five guys in the Secret <laughs> Service. <laughs> so, you know, Ty. Yeah. But to be fair, they did not expect that the Secret Service would be loyal directly to the president. I wrote in my notes, damn, I think Trump might be using this movie as a handbook. <laughs> <laughs> There's this fucking amazing moment where the FBI shows up and they draw their guns on the Secret Service. And they're like, we're here to arrest the president. Let us in. And the Secret Service is like, no. And the FBI guy just shoots him in the head. The <laughs> guy's like, it's the best. <laughs> um, maybe. Okay. Right, yes. Maybe. <laughs> Secret Service guy's like, uh, are we playing with guns? He shot me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Though we have one of those good old fashioned, everybody just stands face to face and starts shooting at each other. Gun fights like they did back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. There was a fire fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the president finally runs out the back of the White House. Yeah, yeah exactly. To the, uh, the helicopter in the back of the White House and flies away. And he's just like, yeah, all right, we flew away. I'm, uh, I'm still the president. That's the rule. If you fly away. You didn't get me. You didn't get me. You got my jacket. <laughs> that's, that's the scene, too. Right. Like, like first of all, like kudos this movie had helicopter money i didn't think this movie had helicopter money but then like the shootout ends with him just like getting to the helicopter and leaving that's it <laughs> that was the clever thing that he did yeah to get if out nixon of nixon has taught us anything helicopters are safe <laughs> <laughs> all right so so then we cut to stone giving us his like but america is now mine monologue to the chinese leader right yeah he gets on the phone with the guy. He's like, hello, China, China? Mr. China. He's like, I'm, I'm President Xi. It's, it's fine. Just don't don't call me China, please. <laughs> and, and he announces they're like, all right, well, the U.S. president is getting replaced. He flew away. So we didn't technically get his jacket, but like, hey, we're, we're switching it up. So I own America now. Right. And, and China's like, well, I don't care. We can stand to lose a lot of people in a war. We're fucking China. He's like, eh, yeah, yeah, yes. you are. I'm the Antichrist, and let me just say, you, China, have kind of bummed me out with your war tactics. <laughs> 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 well, and, and then the, the Stone Alexander says, well, you know, according to the Bible, the armies of the East are going to rise up against us. And I'm like, 
According to the Bible, you lose to a guy <laughs> with a mouth sword, dude. Are you reading the Bible? Uh, really? I'm only <laughs> reading a word a day. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> right, right. I don't want to get ahead. I don't want to spoil tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> There's this part about a bear and this guy. <laughs> he's bald, though. So, you know, gross. So, and then he summons mouth bees. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The, it's not the summoning mouth bees so much as the wife walking in yes, off the mouth Yes. yes. <laughs> you glorious. always walk in right as I'm summoning. You're going to think I do nothing but summon mouth bees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gets off the phone with Mr. China. And then immediately Palpatine's like, all right, no, we have time to do our afternoon um, e evil bees thing. Cool. <laughs> and he, so he starts literally vomiting a swarm of bee locusts, whatever, all over the world. And the wife walks in at that exact moment. It's like, hey, honey, do you want Thai food tonight or bee vomit? Oh, uh, all right. No Thai food. No Thai food. Fine. Yeah, so she runs off screaming the my husband just vomited out devil bees scream. The sidekick catches up with her and demands that she renounce God. Right? Yeah. And then we cut to the bees attacking China. Moments later, they're fast. Very fast, fast bees. bees. Talk about yeah. your murder hornets. And <laughs> and the Chinese premier has an assistant next to him at this point, and, and she's like, Yeah, lots of bees all of a sudden. Ah. Any chance you just had a fight on Skype with the Antichrist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but first of all, by the way, okay, this was supposed to be the lion face scorpion horse locust with crowns and shit. Instead, they just went bees. Fuck you. Bullshit. Yeah, exactly. But so, yeah, so we see the president of China or whatever standing at his window, and there's just bees moving by the window as he's saying this. And he's like, <laughs> all right, but we have one more trick up our sleeve. We'll wait until late act three. Uh, so meanwhile, the president shows up on a battleship. He walks out to the bridge and he's like, gentlemen, you guys are on my side of the coup. OK, all right. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. shirts. This is a weird situation. Yeah. Yeah. And this one Navy boat is just the one They're They're cool with it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're on his side. The president's personal side. <laughs> Yeah. You guys are all on my team just right away. I thought I was going to have to give a speech. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so we don't. You guys all like sticklers about the order of succession or something. <laughs> so all right. mad about the so secretary cool. of state just jumping right in. Right. <laughs> so he's like, all right, it's time to send out our troops to fight. And I'm like, are, are we going to get American troops fighting bees? <laughs> 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 Your firearms are useless. <laughs> <laughs> They're just shooting cannons into the sky. <laughs> and they brought the president okay. with them. They're they're doing a raid on the fucking Antichrist's palace with the president. With the president. <laughs> like he's like, no, I want to play too. And they're like, well, if he wants to play too, he is the boss. So uh, mom said we have to bring the president. <laughs> <laughs> and we I want to talk about this accidental comedy moment that they have when they get into the castle. So here's what happens. They get into the castle and the Antichrist says, hello, David, but it's just a TV that turns on. <laughs> but one of the military guys freaks out and shoots the TV. Kill the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everybody's like, okay, man, you, you get that you didn't kill the guy on the TV, right? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I thought he was right behind me. I, it's a TV. Is there another TV where we can watch his threatening message? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Describe what you clue. see as the difference between yeah. us next to you and somebody on the TV. I just wanted to clear up safety for later. Flat, small. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and also they find uh, Gabriella locked in the dungeon, talking a bunch of crazy bullshit. <laughs> she's got. She's got her her cryptic prophecy here. She's like, you must. Follow the man with eyes that do not see. Okay. A blind guy? <laughs> I mean, yes. it's not really a riddle. I don't even know why you were trying to make it a riddle. Yeah, I was going to say, and it turns out to, yes, just be a blind guy. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, we missed Stone Alexander when we went to raid his palace. So I guess we'll drive away. It's like, didn't we show up in helicopters? We're driving away. They, they drive away. And again, it's one of those beautiful things where it's just 
a little bit too long before the next thing in the plot happens. I really wanted the military guy with him to be like, so, Mr. President, uh, I'm thinking of a thing. Huh? I'm thinking of a thing. <laughs> I spy something red. <laughs> something bees. Yeah. So, yeah. But so then they come across the blind guy and the president just starts following him. And I wanted Gabriella to show up and be like, okay, not every goddamn blind. Come on. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> sir, do you have a magic message for me, sir? <laughs> Let me, do you have eyes, but you can't see? Yeah, I'm blind. Is that... That's a weird way to phrase it. Yes, I guess. And then the president is just like, all right, well, I might as well follow this guy into a church and stay for the sermon now, right? <laughs> yeah. But Maybe it'll be relevant to my story plot movie. It's so fucking like, okay, so he's the fucking U.S. president. People in this church would recognize him, right? Even <laughs> if it is Italy. So, so, yeah, so he walks into this church. There's a dude preaching about like, you know, this part of the movie in the Bible. Major spoilers. Yeah, right. Dude, this is great. You 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 popped in actually. You need to listen to my sermon about the end of that book, your movie. <laughs> yeah. People have been telling every character that they need to do that. And so and then the um all of the people in the church turn to him and start chanting save us at him. And we know that this is a profound moment because it's like it's slow motion and then fades out on that, right? Yeah. Really really shows you how easily Christianity transfers its cult from Jesus to any white guy with power. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So he walks outside and they're like, you know, one character's like, what the fuck was that? It doesn't even make sense in the plot. Was something just communicated there? He's like, it's time to fight back. He's like, we've been, we just raided his compound with guns and grenades and shit. What do you mean now it's time to... God damn it, this makes no sense. Now. I thought we killed him in the TV. No, man, we didn't kill him. We just talked about this guy. You're saying right. there are other TVs. So I guess me and the president of China, we're going to go beat up the Antichrist in person is the only thing we can do now. Yeah, right. So that's the plan, right? They're going to pretend that they're all showing up for a historic peace agreement with, you know, tanks. <laughs> we, we also get a weird shot of the Western Wall like meanwhile the jews are praying just in case you were wondering what the jews were up to during the <laughs> giant <laughs> peace conference yeah so now the um the president's there and they're all trying to figure out how they're going to attack the antichrist right how it's going to happen and and they all look and they see that the president's just kind of hovering in the doorway and he's like either way a lot of people are going to die and they're like yeah we're planning a war dude so that's <laughs> We go into it expecting that. Okay. I know you said you want to beat up the Antichrist in person with <laughs> the leader of China. You said that. I just think, why don't we just expose the Antichrist and get a new leader of the UN? And he's like, shut up, nerd. We're doing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, he, he sneaks himself a gun and then he heads off to take take out, I guess, the Antichrist on his own. This is when Stone Alexander addresses his troop on giant screens like only the bad guys ever do. <laughs> right? Yeah. Tension, everyone. We're going to do a one on one meet and greet with uh, all of the <laughs> evil nations. I can do selfies, but I do not have time to sign stuff. So please get a pre signed <laughs> eight by 11. Love you. Yeah. Also, it is, uh, it's not a luncheon anymore. Come having eaten. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, President David prays to Jesus to ask why the hell he would be the main character in this film. He says, I don't I don't want to die, God, but you would never guess it based only on my career choices. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Jesus, I don't know if I can shoot the Antichrist in the face, but if that is your will, it's a weird weird plan. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so good because he asks God, like, Hey, God, why me? And there's such a long pause. And he's like, <laughs> okay, I really thought I'd get an answer from God All there. Right, well. All right. All right, then. Nothing. Sorry, what? I thought you said something. <laughs> nope, it's nobody. Nobody said anything. So then he runs off into the enemy camp. To, to what? We don't fucking know, right? To shoot the Antichrist in the head. Well, yeah. but no, to run up to the Antichrist, to point a gun at him and say, hey, the Antichrist. 
It's just been revoked. Fuck. I had a whole thing, but now I got all, I'm all in my head. <laughs> yeah, instead of shooting him, he yells his name. And then somebody hits him in the head with a rifle butt because, yeah. <laughs> duh. All right, so now they've got him in this cell, right? And they have the moment where, like, the two brothers are on either side of the bars and, and Stone Alexander's talking shit to him and David's really upset because they turned, they drove Gabriella Satan crazy or whatever. And so they have the classic moment where he has to, like, reach through the bars but come up short, except his cell is underground. Like, they're, the bars are on it, so he's, like, leaping up trying to get him. It's yeah. like a, watching a short person try to grab something off a shelf. <laughs> hypoglycemic Phil trying to get out of the cage. <laughs> I also love that he's like, the Andy Grass is like, ah, oh, it was so funny watching you and her with your longing glances. I mean, honestly, I, I'm the Antichrist. I'm going to let you fuck my wife if you want to fuck my wife. Not a, <laughs> not a big, uh, cue you in on something. Non-Antichrist people let you fuck their wives. So <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> really? Let me ask something. You have a pool boy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he says to, he turns to David. He goes, "Where is your God now?" He's like, "Oh, he'll be here." In in the very end of Act Three, he'll be here. He's going to wait for a lot of people to die. He'll show up. He's like, "Well, you know, there's 12 minutes of runtime, so it's not going to be more than that." Okay, I just I really don't understand our plan. What? Who is? fighting over what here there's 12 minutes left what are we doing <laughs> yeah right right exactly this again this was supposed to be this everybody was going to sign a peace treaty because apparently the chinese zone the latin zone and the american zone hadn't signed on yet to his one world government so they all brought their armies to the peace summit which means <laughs> like consider how much how many fucking tanks had to move across oceans to make this happen if they didn't expect it to be a war? Now, I should point out, the movie has two tanks, <laughs> so, <laughs> right? I, we will see them again and again with different flags hanging off of the back of them. I just wanted to point that out. One time it's wearing a mustache, big tank with a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, but just then, surprisingly, the armies that came to this peace summit start attacking. Who didn't thunk? So the Chinese are attacking, the Americans are attacking, even the Latins are attacking. Attacking what, though? E exactly. <laughs> there is no clarity to the no. entire rest of this movie. And all the characters are like... Yeah, I don't know. Attack. It's really vague still. God? <laughs> it, I guess we're attacking God? I don't know. It's like someone declared food fight, but with bullets. That's what this <laughs> yes! scene is like. Right, right. <laughs> everybody just starts fighting everybody. And there's so much money wasted on this. Because Okay, up to this point in the movie, I was shocked when they had like helicopter money. Right. But they clearly spent a ton of fucking money on this dumbass scene where who the hell even knows who's fighting who? It's just explosions in the background and bloodless falls. At one point, an explosion explodes. I, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like you're playing paintball, but everyone forgot to assign teams. Yep. <laughs> and it, just, just like Eli running around yelling, anarchy paintball, and like shooting himself in the dick sometimes. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm going like, wait, those can't be the same tanks. They're going in the opposite direction and have Chinese <laughs> flags on them now. Yeah. Then we see some CGI fighter jets and some bombs and shit and then a bunch of explosions. And then David, the, the you know, he's being held captive, obviously, by the Antichrist. He gets away by, you know, pushing down the guys who are holding him captive. And he runs off just as bad guy HQ gets exploded. Oh, yeah. But of course, Stone Alexander is fine because he is the devil. He's got the green smoke <laughs> of protection. Okay. Now, let's give credit where credit's due. This is <laughs> what, our 15th apocalypse? Yeah, 16? Something like that, yeah. This is the first one where Satan literally climbs out of the Antichrist's head <laughs> in the finale. Oh, yeah. He, like, unzips the European guy costume like a, yes. like a Barney costume and he's just like, and I'm Satan. Like, he was physically hiding inside Stone Alexander's skin. Yeah. As 
apparently a gargoyle uh, that fucked a flying monkey, right? This may be our <laughs> silliest looking Satan. Yeah, oh, right? certainly. There cannot be a sillier looking Satan than this. Maybe the one from the Mexican Santa Christmas movie, but this is up there. <laughs> Top three. <laughs> oh, God, this was so ridiculous. He's got these silly little wing hands on the top of his <laughs> wings, but then he also has normal hands. <laughs> it's so weird and stupid. And he still talks like Michael York. Yeah. So it's now Satan going, hello there. I am Satine. <laughs> here to destroy you. <laughs> so, yeah, so the devil, he, he pulls, he grabs uh, David and he pulls out an organ. We don't know which one. I'm thinking it must be his appendix based on how long he lasts afterwards. But yeah, not an important one. I just wrote in my notes. <laughs> oh, man, I got Satan poked right in the tummy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And just to be clear about the visual of what's happening here, a giant gargoyle Satan is bantering with the president of the United <laughs> yes. States and then eventually stabbing his heart out with his claw thingy. Yes. Like nobody's what that didn't catch anyone's eye. Nobody's, <laughs> no, they're all that? they're all busy at the big mini tank fight. Well, there's this great moment too where Satan like looks to all of the explosions and shit, and he has this big long speech about I call upon the powers of the darkness to rise up and destroy all those who stand against me. But then nothing fucking happens. They're like. I guess we used a whole CGI budget on me, huh? So just more ah, more tanks and explosions. Okay, more tanks and explosions. Oh, I, guess. I wanted a bunch of demons to rise up and just like stand there. Like, <laughs> okay, man. What? I don't know. What, te are the te what are the teams? Did you assign teams at the beginning? <laughs> the red pants guys? That's our team? Come on. <laughs> so and then... I wrote this as a, I wrote as a joke in my notes because he says, Jesus is nothing. And I wrote in my notes, shit, Jesus is right behind me, isn't he? And then Jesus <laughs> actually he is. shows up right behind him. And Satan does like a slow turn like, oh, fuck. Yes. Oh, oh, you guys have to leave. My mom is mad. My mom is mad. You guys have to go home. <laughs> we, we can't play Super Nintendo anymore. Yes, God very clearly made <laughs> end of the movie light. And by the way, when Satan sees that and he goes, no, that is visually the greatest goddamn thing we have ever seen. Yeah. Right. Like the the last six minutes of this fucking movie are right up with international gorillas in truly fucking all time gam must see shit. Yep, there's something about lightninging your enemies that these movies just have in common. <laughs> <laughs> also, he doesn't call him Jesus. He calls him Nazarene. Yes. Which, uh -huh. with Michael York's, again, <laughs> crazy pronunciation of the English language over a variety. Of, he's like, Nazarene! Nazarean! Okay. Nazarean! <laughs> I think you're yelling at me because I'm from Nazareth. You're really focused on like the racial element here. <laughs> Northern Italy. What does it matter which part of it? It's fine. Okay. And then so and then the sidekick guy turns to Satan, right? And he's like, you suck. You're a terrible Satan. You fucked it all up. And he runs off, but then he gets lightning bolted and bad CGI demoned to death, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. And then Satan's like, all right, Jesus, you got me. You're the Lord. And then, so he balrogs his Movie ass. over. <laughs> uh, so we, he tosses him down into a pit to hell. We see him cling in for a second, but no. We yeah. do. We watch Satan be like, aha, ha, caught myself. Not in hell. Not Doesn't in hell. Count. Doesn't count. <laughs> I'm halfway. <laughs> and then I'm that breaks off. And he, yeah. Time out. Oh. Time out. I sprained my ankle. That's a, we, we know we said that's a time out. <laughs> And then we see him like he hits the bottom of hell and he's all like chained up in the lava. Because I guess once you showed us that dumbass looking gargoyle devil, you might as well go all the way. <laughs> and, and then there's like movie trumpet. over <laughs> yeah, and movie over. So aggressively, abruptly, there's like weird trumpet fanfare out of nowhere. Like yep. Mario beat a board. <laughs> <laughs> so jarring. And by the way, the entire bad guy army all dies at once like they just took out the mothership, right? Yeah. 
a title card drops like a fire curtain. It's just like, and kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of the Lord. It's so good. It's like the movie threw a smoke bomb and dove out the window through the glass. And was like, we're gone now, movie over. Yeah, that was it. It's over now. There is no wrap up whatsoever. We don't need one. Mm -mm. All right. So I guess that's going to do it for our review of Megiddo, a mega code two, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet. We still need to publicly commit to doing more of this shit. So Eli, tell us what's on deck in a war for a young musician's soul. One dad will find the way Adam's Testament. All right, I like the lead in there. You really Thank made you. that. You yeah, really right? sold that well, shit. Yeah. Awesome. Pretty. All right. Will, will you will you do it as Michael York really quick? In a wheel for one young <laughs> musician so well. <laughs> One dad will find <laughs> the why. <laughs> Adam's Testament. All Adam's right. Testament. So with that to look forward Adam to, we're going to bring episode 264 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help attend by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skin the Game, The Citation Data, d d Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P.A. Drew Torres, Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rise Slot, and we will drop on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promise to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. All of us went on to star in the Omega Code 3 <laughs> 2020 in real reality. Satan went on to have an itch on his nose, but just out of reach of his chain hands for eternity. Oh, that's the worst. Everyone agreed to do shirts and skins for the next apocalypse. It's less confusing. Though. Yeah, way better. We are out of peanut butter. (laughs) 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 The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.